There are six different types of altitudes that you must know and understand as a student pilot. And by the end of this video, I guarantee you will have a real good fundamental understanding of what these altitudes are and why they are important. Hello everyone, my name is Steve, the Wired Flyer, and I try to break down aviation concepts in the simplest way possible that are easy to understand. So let's not waste any more time and dive in. The first type of altitude we'll be going over is indicated altitude. And simply put, that is what you see on your altimeter. Now your altimeter and the reading you get depends on the setting on the altimeter dial that you have it adjusted to. And those different reference points that you could be using are QNH, QFE, and QNE. QNH would be the nautical height or the altitude above the local sea level. QFE would be the field elevation. So the reading on your altimeter would be zero when it's set to QFE if you're on the ground at the airport. So you're setting that baseline that the altimeter is referencing from the airport's elevation. Or you could be referencing the standard pressure, which is 29.92 inches of mercury. And I recommend watching this video where I break down what standard pressure is and where it came from. Indicated altitude is very important because that's what we're referencing when we're communicating to a PC. Then there is pressure altitude, which is what the altimeter will read when you set it to standard pressure, which is 29.92 inches of mercury. Now, standard pressure is like a global reference point that we use in aviation, and it represents the standard atmospheric pressure above sea level on a standard day, which it really is very rarely a standard day. So standard pressure is based on idealized conditions, which would mean 15 degrees Celsius, a constant sea level, and no weather systems at play. Therefore, standard pressure when used on your altimeter setting is wrong more than it is right as these factors like weather and temperature are constantly changing. But it is still a good reference point to use when you are above 18,000 feet, that transition point. And that way, all pilots above 18,000 feet will be using the exact same reference point so that there are no collisions in the air. Then we have true altitude, which is your actual altitude above the mean sea level. And it is calculated by taking the pressure altitude and correcting it for non-standard temperature and pressure. And this is what you'll see on terrain charts and obstacle data. Then we have absolute altitude, which is the height you are above the ground directly beneath you. And this is constantly changing as the terrain beneath you is constantly changing as well. And it's measured by radio and radar altimeters. Altitude number five is density altitude. So this is what the airplane actually feels, the air density, how thick or thin the air is. A common term you'll hear is high density altitude. Now, high density altitude does not mean the air is very dense. It means it's actually not very dense. High density altitude means the air feels like you're flying at, let's say, 8,000 feet, when you could actually only be at about 4,000 feet. Now, this is very important for the pilot to know and understand because the aircraft is going to perform way better with dense air because you got to think the propeller spinning, pulling back or pushing air molecules for it to perform well. It wants to push back a lot of molecules. And same with the engine and the wings. The wings are going to perform best with high density. And so is the engine as the combustion chamber needs more air molecules to perform properly. So the higher the density altitude, then the thinner the air, which reduces the engine propeller and wing efficiency. It will also result in a longer takeoff roll and slower climb rate. Altitude number six is calibrated altitude, which is your indicated altitude corrected for instrument and installation errors. In most GA aircraft, calibrated altitude will be almost the same as indicated altitude. So now that we've gone over all six different altitudes, let's summarize them all and look at them on this photo right here. True altitude there is the height above sea level. Absolute altitude is the height above the mountain or terrain that is beneath you. 
Indicated altitude is what your altimeter shows you. Pressure altitude is the altitude shown when the altimeter is set to standard pressure, which is 2992 inches of mercury. And lastly, density altitude, what the airplane actually feels. Now it's time for a fun fact. North America's highest public airport is in Colorado, just shy of 10,000 feet. On a hot summer day, the density altitude could reach upwards to 13,000 feet. That's higher than most general aviation aircraft can safely fly, and you're still on the ground. So thank you guys so much for watching. I do recommend watching this video right here to do a deeper dive on barometric pressure and have a better understanding of all these altitudes we went over today. And please like the video and subscribe to join me on the journey from electrician to pilot at 30 years old with the family. And don't forget, keep learning, stay motivated, and chase your dreams. That's good.